Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Ty, and I'm coming from you live. I'm coming to you live from the Aquarium of the Pacific here in Long Beach. Now, I'm not by myself in the studio. I also have my friend Courtney, who's going to be working all the magic that you see behind me on the screen here. Now, what's so special about our program is that I would love if you would all join me live today. So, I'm going to have Courtney throw up a number on screen right here, 562-286-1838. Uh, and you can actually use that text line to text us live. You can send in any questions that you might have about the things we're going to talk about today. Or if you would just like to share your observations, we would love to hear those as well. Now, if you're watching this program after it's live, or if, you, if it's just easier as well, you can also use the email down below. That's live at lbaop.org. And we'll be sure to make, uh, or we'll make sure that we get to check all of our emails and get back to you with any questions that you might have. All right, my friends. So what we're going to do today is we are going to be scientists together. We are going to dive in and explore a very amazing animal. I won't spoil it just yet. But what I want to talk about first is what it means to be a scientist. Because being a scientist means that what we're going to do is we're going to be curious. We're going to ask questions. We're going to observe the world around us. In this case, some of these ocean habitats you see behind me. And then we're going to work together to learn a whole lot about some amazing animals, as well as their adaptations. Now, adaptations is a word that I'm going to use quite a bit today. Adaptations is just a, a big science word for things that an animal has that helps it to survive. Things that make the animal special, and it could be anything, like, for example, on us, humans, we have many adaptations too. Your hands are an adaptation because, well, think about what our hands help us to do. It could be to help us eat our food, right? It could be to help us hold on to things. It could be to help us play video games, right? Very important things. So our hands are just one example of a very useful adaptation, but it could be even things that we sometimes take for granted, like our eyes that help us to see this world around us, or our legs to help us move. All of these things help us to survive in our habitat and our place, which is right here on land, right? So we're going to try and use that same frame to explore some adaptations on some different animals today, one in particular. And so before we go into that, though, and dive into our special animal of the day, I want to get our brains warmed up as scientists and just make some observations together. Now, the animal that we are going to explore today is the sea otter. Now, the sea otter lives in an ocean habitat like the one you see behind me. So before we get to the otters, let's explore the habitat, the home of this animal, so we can be ready to observe some of their adaptations. So I'm going to step off. And I want you to go ahead and make some observations. Just think about what are some things that you notice. Now, if you notice anything interesting, you're welcome to text us at the number there. Or if you're watching with somebody, you can also just share with them as well. Now, what are some things that you notice about this habitat here? Now, what we're looking at is actually a camera that is in one of our exhibits. So if I was to walk out of this studio and around the corner, this is the live feed, or this is what I would see in person in our exhibit. Our exhibit here is called Blue Cavern. Now, Blue Cavern is, a is modeled after a real habitat off Catalina Island. But when we're thinking about what type of habitat it is, we call this place a kelp forest. Think about a forest, like a forest here on land. When you imagine a forest here on land, what are some things that might pop into your brain? It could be the tall trees, right? Lots and lots of plants. Lots and lots of animals that live throughout the forest, right? And that same thing applies here in the kelp forest. Now, the kelp forest, the kelp is that key part. Because the forest, just like a forest on land, means that you're going to have these sort of ants that form the, the structure of this habitat. Now, in this case, kelp is what you see here, growing really tall all the way up to the surface of the water that creates that sort of forest. Now, kelp is not actually a type of plant. It's a type of algae, but it does a lot of the same things that plants do. It uses the sun for energy, and like in the rainforest, it provides a lot of those same benefits for the animals. Can you think of any animals or any things that the kelp provides for the animals that call it home? Why would this kelp be beneficial or helpful to the animals that you see here? Hmm. Well, if we take a close look, you might see some of our fish that are swimming through here kind of moving between the forest, moving through the kelp. And that's because kelp can be a great hiding spot. It's a great shelter for a lot of animals. 
Now this could be especially helpful if you're a baby fish, right? If you wanna find a spot to hide, having this kelp, this forest, can be a great way to make sure that you can hide and blend in to prevent yourself from, well, maybe getting caught from a predator, right? Now there are also some other benefits that kelp provides too. It's also food for a lot of animals. A lot of um, creatures rely on things like kelp or other types of seaweed as their main source of food. Now, there's also benefits that it provides for humans too. Even though we don't live in this environment, we do get some benefits from the kelp forest. It helps to protect our coastlines from strong waves. And because they're like plants, plants also help release oxygen into the environment that we as humans use. And so kelp is one of the types that is doing that same thing that plants are doing. And so as you can see, the kelp forest has a lot of benefits for the animals that call it home. Now let's go ahead and take just one more minute to see what we notice about some of these animals, right? Maybe you might recognize some of these, but maybe not. See if you recognize any patterns though. Maybe what colors do you see across these different animals? Well, one of the other things with the kelp forest too is there's usually lots of rocks. You can see there's some big rocks in here. There's rocks all the way along the back. Now at first, you may think, why do we care about the rocks? Well, it's actually very important because the rocks are what allows the kelp, the seaweed here, to attach itself. It allows it to stick in place. It needs a hard surface like a rock to stay in place. Now, because of that, the rocks mixed with the different colors of the kelp means that most of the animals that you'll find here will match that habitat. So remember, we're trying to think about adaptations and coloration can be an adaptation. See what colors you can spot on the fish that are living through our kelp forest. Do you see any bright yellows, bright purples, any really, really bright colors that really stick out? Well, you might find one or two, but for the most part, you can see all of these animals have sort of these dark muted colors that help it to blend in. And in the case of the giant sea bass, which is this huge one that's gonna swim by us, you'll notice that their pattern has sort of a spotted pattern and it helps it to blend in, to camouflage almost makes it look like a rock, right? And so that is a useful adaptation for all these animals that call the kelp forest home. And the kelp forest is very important. But let's go ahead and dive into the animal that we're gonna focus in on today. Because the animal that we're gonna explore is sort of like the guardian of the kelp forest. And we'll explore why. So we are going to talk about the sea otter. Now, I know when we first show the sea otter, the always initial reaction is, oh, it is so adorable, and it is. Sea otters are very, very cute, but there is much more to them than just that cute face. So let's go ahead and take a close look at our sea otter and see what are some things that you notice. What adaptations, things on the otter's body, do you notice that might help it to survive out in the ocean? Hmm. Now, in the kelp forest too, we don't get to, when we're just watching through our camera, we don't get to feel what it's like to be in there. But I will tell you, most of the kelp forests, like the one you just saw, the water is very, very, very chilly. So that's another thing to keep in mind too. So what are some things you notice about our little otter here? Well, some things you may notice are kind of similar to, to us, right? They have eyes and a nose and a mouth like we do. And this picture of an otter, it's actually not in the water. Well, that's kind of interesting. I thought sea otters, well, they live in the sea. Well, they do. But unlike fish that we just saw swimming around, they need to be in the water the whole time. Sea otters are a type of marine mammal. Now, maybe you've heard of mammals before. In fact, look around your room right now. Can you spot any mammals? Any mammals around you? I know that where I am right now, there's mammals around me too. Now, the answer should be yes, because guess what? You are a mammal right, watching right now. That's true. So we are mammals that live on land, the otter is a marine mammal, so the difference is they just live in the ocean. But that means we have some things in common. And one of the key things is, if you take a big deep breath, we breathe air, right? Otters do too. So even though they live their whole life in the ocean, they're actually gonna spend a lot of time up at the surface because they're breathing air. They're not breathing through the water using gills like a fish. Nope, they're gonna breathe air just like us. But there are also some other things that mammals share that we have in common. Do you see anything that I might have in common with the sea otter that you see here. How about give yourself a pat on the head perhaps. We have hair up here on top. Do you see any hair on the sea otter? You should, right? There's a ton. They have fur or hair all the way along their body. That's another thing that mammals will share in common. 
Now for the sea otter, that fur or hair is going to be especially helpful. Can you think of, can you think of why? Why would it be helpful to have fur all the way along your body? Well, I, I sort of told you that the kelp forest, that habitat, is very, very cold. The water is very chilly. So if you can imagine, if you spend your, most of your day or all of your day in the ocean, you're going to want a way to make yourself warm, right? And so that is where that fur comes in handy. So the fur for otters is actually very special. In fact, let's go over to my document cam. Now I have a little piece. It's not a real otter fur, but it'll give you an idea of just how fluffy these animals are. Because if you've ever wondered what is the fluffiest animal on the planet, the answer is actually the sea otter. Now what that means is, is they have the most hair on their body compared to any other animal. And so to give you some reference, if you were to make a little circle with your hand, and I was to put it over this section of fur, right, just this little space, there are hundreds of thousands of hairs just in this one little spot. So it is a super dense, super thick coat of fur that helps them to stay warm. Now, there are other types of marine mammals in the ocean. Uh, you, some things that might come to mind might be like a sea lion or a whale. Those animals have an extra way to stay warm, and that is blubber. Now that is especially true for the big, large whales. Blubber is like a thick layer of fat that helps to keep them warm, but sea otters are the smallest of the marine mammals, and they don't have any of that blubber. So instead, they just have a really, really thick coat of fur that helps them to stay nice and warm. All right, now, now that we know how they're staying warm out in the ocean, one of the other things that all these animals are gonna need to do is eat. So let's talk about some of the ways that these otters find their food out in their natural habitat. So go ahead and take a look at this picture here. And this otter is actually enjoying a little snack right now. Can you tell what it is munching on? Hmm, might be a little bit hard to tell, but it looks like our otter a nice crab snack. So let's talk about how these sea otters get their food. Well, if they're mammals, so they're breathing air, that means they can't spend forever down underwater, right? Just like us, we can, we can go on a little dive, but we can't be down there forever because we're gonna have to come up to the surface to breathe air. And so sea otters will do short little dives where they'll go down into the kelp forest, the habitat we looked at earlier. And even though they're pretty good swimmers, fish are gonna be usually too fast for that. So they're not gonna be very good at catching really, really fast fish that swim around. So instead what they do is they dive all the way down to the bottom of the kelp forest and they look for these different types of invertebrates, different critters that live down. Invertebrates are animals that don't have bones. And there's a huge group of different animals that fall under that umbrella. And one of those things, are things like crabs. So as they go down to the bottom, they'll go down to the bottom of the kelp forest, they'll look for animals that live down at the bottom, like crabs or even things like clams or even some snails like abalone. And so there's lots of these creatures that live down at the bottom of the kelp forest that they are going to be looking for. Now, once they've gone down and found the food that they want, they have a really cool trick. In their little armpits, they have a little layer that we call pockets. And it's sort of like a little layer of skin that hangs down that they can use to actually store things in. So an otter will go down, grab some food, bring it up in its pockets, and come back up to the surface. And then, as you can see here, they can use their belly like a dinner plate. But some of the things I mentioned that they like to eat, like crab or clam or abalone, like snails. Well, let's go take a look at my camera, actually. And I want to show you something unique about the food that they like to eat. So if we bring over some of the things, and maybe if you like to eat any of these things, it might be somewhat familiar. So if you think about a crab, or in this case, a clam, or a snail like an abalone, they have a very, very tough shell, right? Or if you've seen people eat crab before, you know that we don't just bite right through a piece of crab. We have to break open the outer layer, that exoskeleton on the outside. Or if we're eating clam, we have to break through this shell here too, right? That would probably hurt our teeth pretty bad to try and bite through these shells. So if that's what these otters like to eat, how are they? 
how are they doing that? How are they finding a way to open up these things? Because when humans eat them, we have, we have tools and stuff to help us. Well, otters also use tools as well. Can you think what might be a useful tool for an otter to break open its food? Well, it could be as simple as a rock. And so these otters, as they go down, they find their food, they bring it up. If they want to get into these things with the hard shells, they have two things to help them. They can use a rock like a tool. And so their little paws that they have are not only adorable, but they also are very useful, as you can see, for holding on to things and for breaking open their food, for using a rock to smash open things with a tough shell. As you'll see in this one, this is one of our exhibit otters. Now, this otter doesn't have a clam per se, but if you see how um, they were taking that little toy that they have and sort of smacking it up against the window, right? They can use those rocks or smack it up and get something hard in order to break open their food. Now, another cool trick they have are their teeth. Now, otters, they are adorable, but their teeth are pretty big and strong. So their strong teeth can also help them to bite through things like, in the case of the crab, try and break open that tough exoskeleton on the outside, that tough outer layer. And so sea otters spend a lot of their time eating food, a lot of time. And that's because in, in addition to that fur that helps them stay warm, they need to constantly be eating in order to generate their body heat. Now otters, when I say they eat a lot, I mean they eat a lot. Otters will eat up to about 25% of their body weight each and every day. Now, what does that mean? Well, let me put that into perspective. For us as humans, if we, for example, if I weighed 100 pounds, that's like me eating 100 quarter pound cheeseburgers every single day. That is a ton of food, right? And so, as you can see here, these otters have those tough teeth. Maybe you can see, we'll watch it again. You can see those tough teeth there that they can use to break into those uh, different food items with those tough shells. But they need to eat a lot. 25% of their body weight is no joke. And so they spend a lot of their time diving down, finding food, because as they burn that food, as they consume it, it helps them to stay nice and warm. And then they have that fur layer to keep that heat in that they generate. So a very useful adaptation for surviving out in the ocean. Now, another thing that otters do when they're spending their time up in the kelp forest is they need to make sure that that fur they have stays nice and healthy. And so in addition to foraging for food, they also spend a lot of time grooming. Now, maybe we can take a look at some otters as they're grooming themselves, but it is also very adorable, like you can see here, right? But not only is it adorable, that is a very good way at making sure that their fur is nice and clean, and nice and healthy, so that it can keep them warm. Now, their fur is actually so thick that their skin underneath is not actually even touching the water. Because they have so many thick layers of fur on the outside, it's sort of like covering yourself with a whole bunch of blankets, right? If you did that, your skin under the bottom layer is not actually going to get cold, but that fur covering yourself will keep you nice and insulated, nice and warm. And so they need to make sure that they're grooming themselves, keeping that fur nice and healthy, and so that way they can uh, stay nice and warm out in the kelp forest. Sorry, it's just so cute watching them do this. It never gets old. Now, another thing that you may notice in this video too, in addition to our otter grooming the head, they're also grooming down at the bottom where they have some flippers. Now, since they're spending their life out in the ocean, they have some flippers down there at the bottom that are, you can see getting groomed here, that are very useful for helping them to perform those dives, to swim through the water, right? Because they're not spending much time, if any time, up on land, their leg, their bottom part, is very different than ours, right? We have our legs to walk around on land, they have their flippers down there to help them swim through the water when it's time for their dive. And that fur also um, helps them to, to stay warm through all those dives throughout the day. All right, now there's another item that these animals love to eat. And it connects back to why earlier I called them the guardians of the kelp forest. And that's because one of their favorite treats, in addition to the things that we just talked about here, is this creature called a sea urchin. Take a close look. What do you notice about this sea urchin here? Well, it's got some cool colors, right? This one is a really bright purple color, which is really cool. But what else do you notice about this animal here? What do you think it would feel like if I was to touch it? Yeah, sea urchins will give you a hug if well, you should make your really good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 
If you see something that looks like this, does that seem like something that you're going to want to try and eat? Probably not, right? And so those spikes can be very helpful for keeping the organ safe, right? So these spines, as you can see in this video, this is really cool. It's moving around, it keeps them protected. It can also help them to hide in the rocks too. So it's a great way to keep them safe. So if not many things would want to eat these because they look so spiky, but we remember that the sea otters have a very special ability like their tools that they can use to break into things. Sea otters love to eat sea urchins. Now, if we go back to that picture of the sea urchin that we saw earlier, the sea urchin itself is actually eating here. Did you notice that it's hanging out on this blade of kelp, like from the kelp forest we saw earlier? So sea urchins love to eat kelp. Now, sea urchins are a natural part of the kelp forest ecosystem, but if there's very few things that can eat them, sometimes their populations can grow too big. If there's too many sea urchins, what do you think happens to the kelp? They might eat all of that kelp. And so if the sea urchin eats all the different types of kelp, well, think back to the, all the benefits we talked about earlier that the kelp forest provides, right? It's shelter, it's food for other animals, it provides benefits for us humans on land, like oxygen and protection. And so if the urchin population grows too big, then you might get a habitat that looks like this. What do you notice about this habitat versus the healthy kelp forest we saw earlier. What things are missing? Well, there's no kelp, right? We don't see any tall kelp growing from here, but what else is different? What else looks different from the healthy kelp forest we saw earlier? Well, tons of urchins, right? Definitely. But can you spot any other animals? Do you see all the different kinds of fish that we saw from the kelp forest? No, right? And so as you can see, that when urchins, when they grow too many, it not only means that, well, there's a ton of urchins, but it means that we lose the ecosystem, that kelp forest, for everything that relies on it. But how has this happened? If sea otters love to eat our sea urchins and they sort of help keep the balance, how did we get places that look like this? Well, the sea otter's fur that we talked about, their very special fur, did get them into a bit of trouble in the past. Now, before us humans had a lot of the stuff that we used to make, like fake fur coats and stuff to keep us warm, sea otters were hunted for their fur. Now, unfortunately, they were hunted almost to the point of extinction. We almost completely lost sea otters. Can you imagine that? A world without sea otters? That is not a place that I want to be in, right? Because sea otters are so amazing. They're adorable, they're fun to watch, but they're super important for our ocean's health. Because when otters were hunted and they were removed from these ecosystems, we saw great change. A lot of these kelp forests turned into things that look like this, urchin barren. Where there is no kelp, we lose all those benefits and you've lost the home for all the others that rely on them. And so that's why, we call, that's why I call the sea otters the guardians of the kelp forest. They're also known as a keystone species. What that means is if you take that animal out, you see huge changes like you see right here. So the otter, the, they're so important to their ecosystem, which is why I said there's a lot more to them than their cute face. They really can alter the entire place that they live in. And so one of the ways that we wanna help bring back these otters and bring back the kelp forest is through a cool program going on at the aquarium called the Sea Otter Surrogacy Program. Now, earlier I mentioned that sea otters are mammals, just like us. They have some things in common with us. One of the other things that is shared um, between otters and us is when they're babies, right? They need to get milk from their mom, like we do. But also, just like humans, we learn a lot of skills to live from our adults, right? Now, for us, we learn a whole bunch of skills as we grow up, right? But for sea otters, they learn all of the skills they need to survive from their mom. And all of these skills are things like we talked about, how to hunt, how to forage for food, how to groom your fur, right? All of these skills that are essential for an otter to survive, they get taught from their mom. But unfortunately, there, have been, there can be times where we, pups 
young otters can be found stranded, stranded away from their mom. And so a cool thing that is going on here at the aquarium um, is a partnership with the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Now, what happens is we can bring in some of these rescued sea otters. And what we found is if we want an otter that's going to be ready to go back out into the ocean, one of the ways that, they, um, that we can teach them all these skills that they need is to pair them up with what we call a surrogate mom. And so we have otters here at the aquarium who live in our exhibits, but they can actually be really important because we can pair them up with one of these stranded pups, one of these little babies that needs to learn its skills, and these otters can teach them. They teach them how to forage, they teach them how to groom themselves, all the skills, they teach them basically how to be an otter. And so once these otters get a little bit older and they're healthy and ready to go, some of these otters will be put back out into the ocean. Now, this program is so important because as we learn today, bringing back otters is not only good for bringing, bringing them back, right? Of course, we would love to see more sea otters out in the ocean, but like we saw earlier, sea otters have a huge impact. Their return not only means that they come back, but they can actually restore entire ecosystems by bringing back that balance and bringing back healthy kelp forests. And so, as you can see here, these are some of our adorable uh, exhibit sea otters playing in some of their ice. That's one of their favorite treats. So not only are they acute, but they are also super important. All right, my friends. So let's go ahead and take a look back at, let's take a look at the healthy kelp forest once again. So we can see what that ecosystem will look like once otters can be returned, right? Because if you have otters that are now eating some of these things like sea urchins, the balance has been restored, you get much healthier ecosystems for all the animals that rely on it, but also for us, right? So let's go ahead and see if we can take another look at an otter and we'll wrap up some of the things that we were able to learn today. Now, as you can see, we didn't get to talk about everything. There's still more to these animals that helps to make them so special. Maybe when you are taking observations, one of the things you may have noticed is like their cute little whiskers that they have on their face, right? Another thing that helps them look cute, but those are also a useful adaptation for finding their food, right? And so even though we didn't get to talk about everything today, I encourage you to stay curious, keep asking questions, and see what else you can discover about this really amazing marine mammal. But well, let's recap what we learned today. The sea otter lives in the kelp forest, which is sort of like, well, an underwater forest where lots and lots of different animals call it home. Now, one of the animals that lives in these kelp forests are those spiky critters called the sea urchins. If there's too many sea urchins and they eat too much of that kelp, then the entire habitat can completely change like we saw. If there's too many urchins and the kelp goes away, you lose the home, the shelter, the food for all the other animals that call it home. And that's where the sea otters come in. By being the great hunters that they are, those great predators for things like sea urchins, they help to maintain a balance in their ecosystem. And so because of their importance, the aquarium is helping to, um, raise, to rescue and raise some of these stranded otters that will be put back into the ocean that will help to boost their numbers so that we can continue to see these kelp forests make a comeback. So when you see a sea otter, now you know, not only are they, are they cute, but they are super, super important. And so we have them to thank for helping to restore some of our kelp forest ecosystems. So my friends, I hope you had a wonderful time exploring with me. I hope maybe you learned something new. Like I said, stay curious, keep asking questions and see what else you can discover about these amazing animals. But for now, we will see you next time for another episode of Aquarium Online Academy. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. See you next time.